This is a new video about DDo. A distributed denial of service attack is a type of web attack that seeks to disrupt the normal function of the targeted computer network. This is any type of attack that attempts to make this computer resource unavailable to its users. While this type of attack typically follows the same sorts of patterns, the definition of the term distributed denial of service does not make any specific indications of how this type of attack is to be pulled off. What makes this type of attack distributed is the concerted efforts between a large number of disruptors all for the common goal of preventing web servers and therefore websites from functioning effectively at all. These users may be willing participants or in some cases be tricked into downloading software that will use their terminal to aid in the offensive. All in all, regardless of the means, a distributed denial of service attack is simply a combined effort to prevent computer systems from working as well as they should, typically from a remote location over the internet. What is a distributed attack? One DDoSer can do a lot of damage. These denial-of-service attacks are called distributed because they come from many computers at once. A DDoSer controls a large number of computers that have been infected by a Trojan virus. The virus is a small application that allows remote command and control capabilities of the computer without the user's knowledge. Specific DDoS attacks types First, UD flood. This DDoS attack leverages the user datagram protocol, a sessionless networking protocol. This type of attack floods random ports on a remote host with numerous packets, causing the host to repeatedly check for the application listening at that port, and, when no application is found, reply with an destination unreachable packet. This process saps host resources that can ultimately lead to inaccessibility. Secondly, Ping of Death. A Ping of Death attack involves the attacker sending multiple malformed or malicious pings to a computer. The maximum packet length of an IP packet, including header, is 65,535 bytes. However, the data link layer usually poses limits to the maximum frame size for example 1500 bytes over an Ethernet network. In this case, a large IP packet is split across multiple IP packets, known as fragments, and the recipient host reassembles the IP fragments into the complete packet. In a ping of death scenario, following malicious manipulation of fragment content, the recipient ends up with an IP packet which is larger than 65,535 bytes when reassembled. This can overflow memory buffers allocated for the packet, causing denial of service for legitimate packets. Thirdly, Solaris. Solaris is a highly targeted attack, enabling one web server to take down another server without affecting other services or ports on the target network. Slowlaris does this by holding as many connections to the target web server open for as long as possible. It accomplishes this by creating connections to the target server, but sending only a partial request. Slowlaris constantly sends more HTTP headers, but never completes a request. The targeted server keeps each of these false connections open. This eventually overflows the maximum concurrent connection pool, and leads to denial of additional connections from legitimate clients. Fourthly, HTTP flood. In HTTP flood DDoS attack the attacker exploits seemingly legitimate HTTP GET or POST requests to attack a web server or application. HTTP floods do not use malformed packets, spoofing or reflection techniques, and require less bandwidth than other attacks to bring down the targeted site or server. 
The attack is most effective when it forces the server or application to allocate the maximum resources possible in response to each single request. Fifthly, zero-day DDoS attacks. Zero-day are simply unknown or new attacks, exploiting vulnerabilities for which no patch has yet been released. The term is well known amongst the members of the hacker community, where the practice of trading zero-day vulnerabilities has become a popular activity. What is a zombie and a botnet? The virus-infected computers are called zombies, because they do whatever the DDoSer commands them to do. A large group of zombie computers is called a robot network, or botnet. Your computer could be part of a botnet without your knowledge. You might not notice any difference, or you might notice your computer is not as fast as it used to be. That's because it may be busy participating in a DDoS attack at the same time you are using it. Or, you might find out that your computer is infected when your internet service provider drops your service, because your computer is sending an unusually high number of network requests.